Hello, welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to take an in-depth look at pH fluctuations. In my previous video, we do, did a quick tutorial on what, how to maintain and adjust your pH and EC. But today we're gonna to take an in-depth look at why your pH is drifting one way or another at a chemical level, which is really interesting. So let's hop into it. So why does pH change in nutrient solution or why does it drift in one direction or drift in another direction? Well, this all ba comes back to the principle of electro neutrality. It's where chemical reactions take place on an equivalent basis. The law of electro neutrality states that in any single ionic solution, for example, our hydroponic nutrient solution, a sum of electrical negative electrical charges attract an equal sum of positive electrical charges. Therefore, according to the principle of electroneutrality, the total charge of an aqueous solution must be zero. For this to occur, the number of positive charges contributed by a cation must be equal to the number of negative charges contributed by anions. When it comes to plants, in very simple terms, when a plant removes a positively charged cation from the nutrient reservoir, it leaves behind a negative charged anion in its place. And when a plant removes an anion from the nutrient reservoir system, it leaves a cation in its place. For cations, some examples are ammonium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, magnesium, zinc, cobalt, and nickel. And some examples of anions are nitrite, nitrogens, phosphates, sulfates, carbonates, and bicarbonates. If you came to me and told me your pH is fluctuating a lot, the first thing I would ask you, what type of plants you're growing? Are you growing the type of vegetable plants that are leafy like greens? like broccoli and spinach or collards? Or are you growing uh, fruit bearing plants like tomatoes, peppers, strawberries? I can almost guarantee you to tell you which direction your pH is gonna change. So if you're growing fruit, fruit bearing plants like strawberries like what I'm growing or tomatoes or hot peppers, those type of plants, those type of plants are gonna grow through a stage where they're gonna flower and bloom and during that phase those plants are going to need a lot more potassium when your plants are flowering and you, when you change your nutrient solution if you look at the mpk values on the label on the general hydroponics you can see that the, it requires a lot more potassium and when the plant needs more potassium in its diet it's going to absorb more of those positive cations and to replace those cations, the plant is just going to expel a lot more hydrogen back into the reservoir and the nutrient system. In that sense, when you have an increase in hydrogens in your solution, your reservoir system is going to get more acidic or increase in pH. Now, if you're growing more leafy vegetables like spinach, scallion, leek, broccoli, cabbage, lettuce, those type of plants require a lot more nitrogen because they're producing more leafy greens. So these plants are absorbing more nitrates in their diet to produce those leafy greens. And nitrate is an anion. And for the plant to continually absorb nitrates for growth, it has to keep that electro neutrality. In order to do that, it has to release a hydroxium ion across the root membrane. And when it does that, the reservoir system is going to get higher concentration of hydroxium ions, which causes the solution to become more basic. In a general sense, it's a huge battle to maintain the balance of nutrients between your macronutrients and your micronutrients. When you look at the macronutrients, like the NPKs, the, for the Nitrogen is your nitrate. When the plant is absorbing more nitrate, it's swapped out for one hydroxium ion. 
when the plant is absorbing more potassium ions, it's swapped out for one hydronium ion. And when it's absorbing more phosphorus or phosphates, it's swapped out for two hydroxium ions. And when you look at the micronutrients, especially your magnesium, calcium, zinc, a lot of that stuff can get more in depth and more complicated. For example, when you look at mag calcium, magnesium, sulfur, these are all essential nutrients for the plants because they're all involved in photosynthesis. It serves as activators for many enzymes required in plant growth and stability of nucleic acids. So when the plants are actively growing, they're absorbing these micronutrients like calcium and magnesium, and they're removing it from solution. So when removing it from solution, hydrogen ions are released from the root system to equalize the ratio of anions to cations in the root zones, and this lowers the pH of solutions. Now, in a sense, it's difficult to tell what nutrients are being actively absorbed and what nutrients are not actively absorbed by the plants. So that's why it's always recommended to periodically change your nutrient system on a weekly or bi-weekly schedule. That's why it's important for, especially for beginners in hydroponics, to understand what's going on on a chemically level for the plants, especially if they're solely relying on the EC reader because you can go for weeks and weeks and have a perfectly normal EC reading, but you can have a tremendous imbalance over time in your nutrient system. So keep up with those periodic changes to maintain those pH levels and your nutrients. So another reason why pH fluctuates a lot is because of the water supply. And depending where you live in the world or where you're located, different towns, cities, or municipalities regulate their water supply in terms of what they add to it. Now, these additives are added to make the water safe to drink for humans, but when it comes to hydroponics and plants and growing, that could cause problems. So when you talk about the water supply, you always talk about the alkalinity or how basic the water. Now these are additives that water treatment plants add to the water to make it safe for human consumption. For one example is they add calcium carbonate, it's a base. So what calcium carbonate does for us is that it helps treat the water and make it safe for human consumption. It kills harmful bacteria in the water. So when you talk about alkalinity in water, a high value for alkalinity in water is around 300 milligrams per liter of calcium carbonate. And a low alkalinity is around 100 mg per liter. Now when you have a high concentration of calcium carbonate, it requires a higher amount of pH to, or acid to bring down the pH to the 5.8 to 6.0 range. Another factor that could affect the pH level is the concentration of your nutrient system. Especially if you have your hydroponic system outdoors, you can see wide fluctuation in your concentration of your nutrient system, where evaporation can occur quite readily during the summertime, where you can easily lose a gallon or two if you don't watch your reservoir level. And as the reservoir system becomes more concentrated, the plants are using a lot more of that nutrients. In this turn, you're going to see a lot more wide fluctuation in your pH level. Therefore, it's important to monitor your nutrient solution levels. Always keep your reservoir system full and regularly test your pH in your reservoir. And if possible, install a float valve. A float valve is really easy to install and it helps to replenish the evaporated water levels in your nutrient system. Another factor that could affect pH is both inorganic and organic materials in the hydroponic system. For example, when it comes to inorganic material, think about the medium that your plants are growing in. Some common examples are gravel or hydrogen. These inorganic material act as natural buffers and they cause the pH become more basic. And if you don't pre-treat these mediums properly for your hydroponic system, they could cause devastating swings in your hydroponic system. For example, for hydrogen, if you read the manufacturer's instructions, it recommends that you pre-treat your hydrogen 
in a pH of 5 solution for at least 24 hours before you start using it. So organic material can also affect the pH level of your hydroponic system and this mostly applies to people who are doing aquaponics. In aquaponics you have a more complex system and when you have organic material decomposing like feces or leaves or debris or soil and when those mater organic material decomposes it releases ammonia. Ammonia is is both toxic both to humans and plants and if that aquaponics is done properly it will have the right biological system to convert that ammonia to ammonium to ammonium to nitrites and to nitrites to nitrates and that nitrate is what the plants absorb so it needs that biological process to help and bacteria to help convert ammonium to nitrate so algaes and bacteria are also main types of organic material that can affect pH. Now if you see the pH more acidic during the nighttime and more basic during the daytime, you might have an algae problem because algae consumes carbon dioxide and in water carbon dioxide exists as bicarbonate and as the algae consumes the uh, bicarbonate, the water becomes more basic during photosynthesis. And during the nighttime, when the plants are using oxygen, they're doing a process of photorespiration, and you might see the nutrient become more acidic over time. On the other hand, bacteria from root diseases can cause a dramatic drop in pH levels. As disease roots decompose, bacteria will release acid into the hydrobionic solution through a process through anaerobic respiration. If you find regulating your pH on a more routine basis problematic, you can always opt for one of those pH automated doser machines, which I'll probably be looking in a future video. But really understanding the pH and how it affects your plants on a chemical level is really important. It will help you maintain the good health of your plants in the long term. So that's all I have for today. Until next time, peace out. If you like the content of this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you have any thoughts, comments, or suggestions, leave in the section below. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Until next time, peace out and happy gardening.